Welcome, everyone. Today we've got two libertarians on the left and on the right of the political spectrum. Uh, but we're all the way on the bottom in the libertarian authoritarian axis. So I want everyone to welcome Walter Schub, a uh, very long term friend. Sure. Schub? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Everyone always prefers it to be Schub. It's a mistake everyone makes because really the Hebrew is Schub, but we, we go by Schub. All right, we'll go by Shub today. So Walter Shub uh, died in the wool libertarian, believes in freedom, as do I. And, you know, it's interesting that um, people across the libertarian uh, spectrum sometimes suspect the other side of not really supporting liberty because they can't imagine how, wh- how would it be that someone could be all the way on the left or all the way on the right and support liberty. It seems so different. So today we're going to have a very interesting conversation about no less than libertarian capitalism versus libertarian communism, straight up communism, uh, and and talk about which organizing principle of society could lead to more freedom, more prosperity for people, and just talk about, you know, the underpinnings of society and how it works. So welcome, Walter. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into libertarianism? How did you discover that you love liberty and uh, you prefer it to authoritarianism. So I, I, my journey was, you know, I, I grew up in the, um, like I came of age in the, in the, um, in the two thousands when, you know, I was a teenager and then Bush was like, well, we got to go there and get those Arabs and like in Iraq and like this thing. And then it just turned out to be this big lie, just like massive lie. So I was like, okay, maybe the liberals have something interesting to stand this question. And they didn't. And I just realized, like, they're just all liars. They're just all liars. So then I just assume, I assume that, like, something like the state, certainly like a federal government, like with all this amount of money and centralization, is by definition corrupting. I laugh when I listen. You know, I'm a big fan of the Jimmy Dore show. But I laugh. And he's just like, well, we just need a third party. It's like, well, why won't the third party be as shit as the other two? They just all suck. Because, like, if you... And then I say, and for one very simple reason, I'm like, a, you know, I'm an ultra, I'm an ultra orthodox Jew. I think I'm like a very ethical person. I think I love my neighbor. I think I, I think I'm a, you know, a pretty moral guy. And I think if I was working under the incentive structure of 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 senate senators and congressmen, I'd be corrupt as it gets. Of course you would. You have no long term um, incentives. You're 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 incentivized to spend other people's money, and if you screw up, you're incentivized to get more of it. The whole thing is disaster. So I think, I think people should just be left their own devices. And I don't think like, so that's my, you know, that's what made me more libertarian. I think, but I just want to, I just want to like, like clarify two points on, on that in, in terms of liberty. Mm-hmm. When I say, I think, I think libertarian capitalism will lead to the most, will lead to the most freedom. I'm thinking when I went to go visit, you know, the old sage of Liashev, who lived in a one bedroom apartment in Jerusalem. And he, and he chose to be poor so that he can spend this time learning Torah. Like he chose and he didn't like no one, he, he wasn't like fed, you know, and that was it. He made that decision and he lived by it. And that was a meaningful life for him. Or like the Elon Musk of the world who have like figured out how to use like tremendous amounts of capital to like to 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 do things correctly. I also, I, I, I think that, that so socialism in 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 um in most in most ways I've had it been used can never is inconsistent with freedom. Um, it well, is we'll talk about that. Yeah, when, and that's and that's what we'll talk about. And and I think, um, I think that, I think that we uh-huh. like. I think that. How do I phrase this? I think that the the socialist understanding of economics, the Marxist understanding of economics, is 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 fundamentally flawed to the point where where a Marxist economist is to real economics what a gender studies professor is to biology. I'm we'll saying, talk about that too. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. Meaning, I don't disagree with socialism because I don't like the idea of kumbaya. I think it is a fundamentally mis- um, has a fundamental misunderstanding of what value is. And the when I listened to started reading, I started reading Richard Wolf's book for this for this debate. I couldn't get past the first. It's just it's just bunk. It's just bunk. The guy's a lunatic. So that's what I think. That's what the crux of our debate will be. 
And um, okay, and that's my uh, that's my opening statement. Excellent. Well, listen, I mean, first of all, you know, it could be more of a discussion than a debate. Uh, definitely. Yeah. I think we have a lot in common and will appeal to each other's uh, love of liberty. Uh, you know, the fact is just because uh, people decide to organize one way or another way, uh, it's not inherently one side has a monopoly on liberty. Um, also, I want to say that uh, I like that you're thinking systemically. You said even if there's a third party or even if you were in charge, right, you're talking about incentives. And I think that's very proper, right, to understand it's not this bad person or that bad person, but the system, um, you know, leads to one thing or another thing. So I'll also talk about why, you know, over time I became a libertarian, especially when it comes to war, right? Governments, people don't want to kill each other, but then their governments conscript them and their governments fail to let's say, negotiate, right? And then they put these ideas in people's heads that they belong to this state or that flag or whatever. And they say, go fight, do your thing. Of course, the people sending them are never going to fight. When they say we must do this or we must do that, they're not going to pay a, a serious price. They don't have the skin in the game. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a way to get regular people to constantly be pitted against each other. And even in, in the same country, they have women versus men, Right. They have feminists versus red pill or they have, you know, white supremacists and black supremacists or whatever you want to say They're at each other's throats. And in reality, what they should be is uniting against the machine. Right. Improving the system. So what's interesting to me is that let's say we didn't have a big state. We didn't have a big federation. Um, what would society look like in the wake of having just a more a flatter, more decentralized society? And I would like to explore what organizing principles lead to people be being better off, right? More people, more prosperity, more freedom. And if that's, you know, libertarian uh, capitalism, then we would see that. And if it's libertarian communism or socialism, you would see that. So I think the first thing to do is just define our terms, right? Would that be very useful is at least define these three words, libertarian, communist, and capitalist, right? So that way, at least we know what we're talking about. But uh, well, <clears throat> sure, sure. Let's let's define like what you think the free market is and what you have a problem with there. Sure. Um, none of these things are antithetical to each other, so it's not what I think. Let's go to Wikipedia sure. and let's go to dictionaries. Okay. So Wikipedia. So we talk about libertarianism. The main value is freedom. Okay. It doesn't say that because everyone's free, therefore they're free to employ other people or dominate other people or anything like that it's just but, well, but that is that that is you if you're going to limit what freedom means you have to explain that right and we will explain that all i'm saying right. is um it you know you could say you're free to sell yourself into slavery or you're free to dominate other people but that's a perverse way of thinking about freedom in, in my opinion freedom means okay so i'll tell you my opinion but let's read the re, let's read what it says sure all right libertarians uh, upholds liberty as a core value. Libertarians of all types seek to maximize autonomy, okay? And autonomy meaning you're not necessarily reliant on other people. You can make your own decisions. And political freedom, uh, which basically means, you know, the freedom to do things without getting cracked down on, um, minimize the state's encroachment and violation of individual liberties. Okay, emphasizing rule of law, pluralism, cosmopolitanism, cooperation, certainly on the left, a lot of cooperation, civil and political rights. Okay, so can we, can we, can we, can we, pause, can we pause on maximize for a second? Maximize sure. autonomy. So I think this is, there's going to be a sticking point. Like, I think that's the key word, right? Like, I don't think anybody has, like, freedom doesn't mean autonomy in general, meaning like, what career you do is certainly limited by the gifts God gave you, right? Like what you, who you marry is certainly dependent on the way you look partly, right? And like the geography, you know, sure. and the, yeah. right? <laughs> where you grew up and, and, and the prosperity around you. And, and the most important one, if you had two good parents or not, right? These are like, these are like hugely important factors and there's no way to have equality of, of, of opportunity or outcome. Either, either idea is nonsense. There was a great scene in the, um, there was a great scene in that movie, uh, um, Enemy at the Gates, that sniper movie between the um, 
the the Russian sniper and the Nazi sniper. So so one of the guys said, you know, he was jealous about the other guy's girlfriend. So he said, you know, in Russia we made everything fair. We made no need for jealousy. And still here I'm feeling like jealous of you. It was such a brilliant it was just such a brilliant point. Um and I think that's really what communism what's what communism ends up doing is just creates jealousy and creates I I assume that there would be no freedom and autonomy. Well, you'd be wrong. I mean, that's very reductionist. And we'll no, so I would meaning okay, but let's so let's let's ex, let's ex, speak it out. Like, like let's talk about the path of somebody. Like, what would how would you decide in 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 a country where the state controls the capital? How would you decide? Like, well, how would you decide what somebody does for so a living? You've already made the mistake. You're right. You're right. I back. I I, I, I the I'm, state I'm, controls the capital. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I don't. I want. I want to understand like what your cradle to grave like what this what how you well get there and i think when yeah. uh, we were talking last time you had a very nice thing where you you went along you said stop me where you disagree and you said yeah i had the whole story so let's do that again let's but do that story but before we do that story let's finish with the definitions all yeah. right libertarianism i think you get the point it's about liberty it's about people having choices right so obviously your cho choices are severely <laughs> cur curtailed if your option is do this thing or die. It's still a choice. Some people choose to die, right? Some people choose to starve. But it, mostly when people say choice, I think they mean viable choices, right? Things that preclude, you know, starvation and being homeless if you refuse to do that one thing, okay? Um, so now, by the way, from my side, I'll just say, uh, in order to have, if you have a safety net or even a universal basic income, like a like a floor, right? Then you can't fall all the way and, and die, no matter what you. Where is that? But where is that? But where is that? But then you, but like, where would that come from? We'll get there. Where it comes from? Okay. My point simply is that when you have a safety net, in my world, you have more freedom in the real sense of freedom, not the philosophical sense that you know you're technically free. Like the, the Republicans love to say access you have access to medicine you can't afford it but you have access like my point is you should be able to in real life be able to make these choices without dying or running out of money um but you see so, so, <coughs> socialism socialism will often make these claims <coughs> will say will say like oh in capitalist societies if you don't have money you'll starve and if you don't have money you'll like won't get basic medical care that's right in a lot of market, market that's what you don't have and, and and according to capitalism in theory if you don't have like enough uh money you'll walk naked right that's in theory what capitalism should produce right according to you and i agree with that in theory and you'll say to me in 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 in, in then you'll say to me by definition and by by in um in theory socialism should provide you with uh food and clothing and a safety net and all these things but in practice in practice the places that have almost capitalism are have people are clothed fat well, well, and we'll, we'll get to the have jobs. for one second one second yeah. let me just make this point let me just yeah. make this point i just want to make the point that in countries that have almost capitalism almost right the 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 the, the you you have less you have less um poverty and in countries where you have well, you have almost socialism. You had millions of people starving to death. So when you tell me definitions, fine. Socialism can we're, guarantee we're whatever. All over the place. Fine. We'll get to the yeah. 20th century. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about sure. capitalism leading people are starving to death, like in the Great Famine in Ireland. In it wasn't Great... capitalism. Okay. See, when when people starve to death under private property laws and enforcement of private property, you say, well, that's the state. But when people starve to death in a <laughs> obviously uh state-based uh, uh stalin you know forcing people to collectively collectivize on the farms you say that's not the state that's socialism you see it's like you're having a double standard when people uh when the state claims it's impl implementing socialism oh, but then you say then you say it's the socialism okay, yeah. when, uh when it's uh the state implementing private property for landlords all of a sudden oh it's not just, it's capital but just, look at, but just look at the but just look at the world countries that have moved towards freedom have seen a tremendous okay okay right okay let's let's, right. let's 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 uh be organized there'll be an entire period when we could talk about countries and where they're moving okay, okay. i mean look you're doing. going back you're going back before the 1950s for I example need to go, i need to go and describe what is capitalism and what is sure communism. okay sure.
Capitalism is characterized by private ownership of the means of production. Okay. Sure. Now these are technical terms. Means of production just means that it's a machine that's able to produce other things, right? Products, a factory. Right. Now today, most of these are owned by corporations. So ownership of the corporation, right? Like if you own, if you're open AI and you own chat GPT and no one else does, right? Then you can extract rents. You can charge money. You can just pick winners and losers who can use it, who cannot. That is private ownership is what I'm saying. Obviously you could say it's not really private because they can have many shareholders. They can go on a public stock market and they can decentralize ownership. But sure. at the end of the day, it's top down. The people at the top decide what the company is going to do, what it's going to produce, and how much is going to charge. Okay. Now we've got communism. Well, I think before we talk about communism, let's talk about socialism just for a second. Because communism is only one type of socialism. Okay. Socialism, I'm just reading here, is a political philosophy and movement encompassing a wide range of economic and social systems, just like with capitalism, there's variation, okay? But they're all characterized by social ownership of the means of production. Notice it doesn't say the government, the state has to be the vehicle by which this is achieved, okay? It just says collectively owning. So like a housing cooperative or a credit union is a bunch of people getting together, cutting out the landlord, cutting out the the, the shareholder of the bank, okay? who, by the way, got wiped out when Silvergate and all of these guys, right, went bankrupt. The first guys to go are the, the risk-taking class, the, the shareholder, right? But they're also the, the class that extract rents from the what normally would be two sides of the ecosystem. So like a credit union has, uh, has the lenders and the borrowers, and you would think that's it, right? And that's a market. But then the shareholders of a bank come in there and they want to extract rents. Anyway, so the difference between capitalism and socialism is just capitalism is a, a few people at the top decide what is going to happen, whereas in the corporation, the organization. I don't agree with that definition in the slightest. Okay, a few people ahead. at the top. No, I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that in the slightest. And I, but I, I, we, we need to get practical to like get really to get really really technical. So let's talk about my story again, and then all we'll right, we'll right, through the definitions. We'll work through the definitions through the story, right? Sure. Okay. So like we said, we have some sort of perfect free society, let's say. And I'll just... stop you if I disagree, okay? Right. Go ahead. Okay. So you, I have a guy. What did we say his name was? We said his name was um, 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 uh, Frank. Sure. Frank, from a young age, has been excellent at cutting hair. His mother taught him how to do it. She taught him how to do it like they did in the old country. And Frank is an excellent hairstylist. Frank and Frank is making Frank is making bank cutting hair, but Frank realizes he can teach his skills to five people in the neighborhood who have no idea how to cut hair and they've never had any chance of cutting hair and they would never learn this. And Frank, instead of instead of instead of um, um, in, um, hires them and pays them a little less while they're learning and then a little more when they're not learning. And then, uh, you know, in, in, um, in um, apprenticeship and Frank now has five, five, uh, five people working for him in a store. I want you to stop me when you feel like Frank has become an exploiter. Okay. Okay. So Frank now, obviously, they work under Frank. They're free to leave whenever they want. They can start their own hairstyle store. But in the meantime, they're working for Frank, and they are, and they are, and they are giving him a cut of their hair. It's a nice cut. Frank's earning thirty percent on the top of every cut um, of of what they're making. Um, fine. So Frank. Okay. So and they have Frank's name. Then they decide to expand. Those five people now become managers of their own stores. They're earning six figures now, and they have hired five more people. And now Frank is obviously getting Frank is now getting multiple income from from all the stores. One moment. Right. I'm going to stop okay. you for a second. Yes, excellent. Stop me. All those other people that they hired are they like also newbies that they trained, or are they hiring professional hairdressers? Uh, because if they are. My question is, why would these professional hairdressers decide to work for them full time? Uh, what if they just want to do 10 hours a, a week or may, why would they have this unequal relationship? How does it happen? Can I can I can I I, I, I can answer this question. I work for a huge company. I work for Auto Trader. Yeah. OK, 
um, it's a very big company. They pay me very handsomely to do work that I find fun and enjoyable and pretty easy to do. I hold no risk. There is almost no, I, there, as long as I, as long as I do the work that I'm given, there's almost no risk. I have a very good work-life balance. I don't have to worry about the business side. I don't have to worry about the legal side. I don't have to worry about the, 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 the op side. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. These people decided to give me money for my time. And I think it's a pretty good deal. So whatever, whatever, whatever reason these people decided to interact with Frank was, they, they had a pretty good deal. And sure, some people are born into pretty shitty situations. I think like, like, like we in the West have it pretty good, but in other parts of the world, like if you need to get water, you have to walk to a, uh, you have to walk to a well and that freaking sucks. And anybody that goes and what you really, and that's why water in those places costs much more money than it does here. Oh, well, by the way, I just want to say, I think we're so rich compared to people in the rest of the world. Uh, a lot of, you know, not just us in the United States, but many wealthy countries. And we're even richer compared to people throughout history, right? Sure. A goat herder who died from a disease or was like disfigured from an early age because of some preventable thing. Or, you know, the fact that Romans had aqueducts, which was like amazing, right? They had public bathhouses. Right. It's a public thing. So like back then, you know, you couldn't have a private, uh, you know, uh, shower or whatever. And, and so they heated the water there. Now, so I agree that we're tinkering around the edges, meaning... We're here in the society talking about, oh, it could be even better if we lower taxes or it could be even better if we have more, you know, health insurance for everybody. But we're already doing better than everybody else. I agree with that. But yeah. I want to say that in this society still, yeah. right? in this society, you're, you're always talking about the nice cases, the good cases. Hey, I wanted to go work for Frank. He was such a nice guy. And he always treats me well, right? The reality is many times people aren't being treated well. I'm saying, for example, Jeff Bezos, right, who was the top you know, uh, the most uh, wealthy man in the world for a while. How did he get his wealth? I mean, let's look at that story and let's go through the same thing, right? Sure. No, let's, no. Do that. let's start from the beginning of, of his. Let's start right from the beginning. I, what I, happens I, is how do you get in the end to people forced to urinate into plastic bottles because they can't I don't know. Control. I don't know if that I don't know if that story is true. I don't know if that story is true. And I don't know what decisions those people are making. Maybe they took like a double shift against company rules. I don't know what happened. Well, you have people in China and other why, places is, what, what, working what, long hours for Foxconn, right? But what would they have been doing? What would those people have been doing in, in the absence of Amazon? What would happen is, you know, there's automation, right? You can see this happening right now. With automation, one second. Hey, what? No, we didn't lose our recording. The recording is continuing. But I'm just wondering, one second. I'm just wondering what just happened here. Oh, there's two of you, isn't there? <laughs> I want to understand, like, let's go into the story of any business. I want to know why you think, why, what, what do you think is being exploited? Who well, is being exploited? So like, so I'll, I'll explain to you the root of the, the whole issue, okay? Anarcho-capitalists, people who are basically right-wing uh, libertarians, they justify a lot of the um, they justify a lot of the stuff by saying that when two people get together and they make an agreement, okay, they're both better off because why would any one of them uh, make an agreement if they would be worse off, right? And sure. they have a point. So when A and B, let's call them person A and person B. They make an agreement. They're both better off because of that agreement, and I agree about that. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think they have to be objectively better off. I think they are subjectively better off. Sure, subjectively. Both of them. Both of them I just want to. That's really important because, like, because, like, <clears throat> as long as I perceive that I'm better off, like, I think that you know, I as an Orthodox Jew think prostitution is an abhorrent idea. I think it's a terrible thing, but I do not support legislation against it. I think <clears throat> that people that engage in, 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 in sex for money are, are both worse off because of the act. I think that that's what I believe as an Orthodox Jew, but I do not think that they think that, right? I think they think they're both about off. The person who bought it thinks that he got the thing that he wanted. And the person who sold it thinks that they got the money. And I don't, I think they are Entering into a into a, into, right. into an agreement where they think they're better off, and that's fine. 
that is though, fine. So what I'm saying is in that in that uh, microcosm of them doing business together is fine. The problem is that a lot of these uh, transactions have a negative externality. They externalize the cost to some other party. Let's call them C. So A and B are better off. Okay. But C is worse off. So like, for example, if I go ahead and I uh, employ a developer overseas, I pay less money. That developer gets a good salary based on their standard of living, right? On their cost of living. Who is worse off? Well, it's the American worker like yourself, Walter, who I would not hire for that money, right? But why, but why do you care about borders? Like you're, no, you're, it's not you're that like... I care about borders. I just want to be clear. It's not about the border in this case. I'm, if, I'm a, if I'm a husband and, so, and my wife goes and I work for a corporation and I choose to work 10 hours a day in order to make partner at the law firm, okay? And then, and I'm not a lawyer, it's just an example. And so my wife decides, you know, I also want to uh, work 10 hours a day. Look, w women's liberation was a great movement. The key is liberation, but the, co the corporations co-op, what the corporations do, and this will become a recurrent theme in what I'm talking about, they co-opted very nice movements like women's lib and said, okay, woman, your, um, your uh, meaning in life is to be found climbing the corporate ladder, just like with the man that we already bamboozled into working so, so long. You know, right. and so the idea they call it some they used to call it the American dream. You have a house, you have everything, and one person worked. Now both people work, they flood the labor pool. And and so in the macro scale, what happens is the wages get depressed. Now there's twice as much labor chasing the same positions, let's just say. And I'll give you one great example. That's that I, I think there's twice as much labor probably training triple the positions. So well, here's what I'm trying I to don't, say. I don't I don't see what you were describing. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I See, I, 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 I am more of a, I am more of a traditionalist, and I do agree that that feminism has probably led to shared misery as opposed to shared happiness. Everybody now, women have now have the right to be just as miserable as men are, and I do think they should have that right. But I think that like the, the breakdown of traditional homes is is a, is a negative. I agree with that. But the idea that like there are less jobs, do you ever went on LinkedIn? It's not that there's less jobs. Hear me out. When the women and the man both decide to work for the corporation. The loser is their kids. The loser is their elderly parents who they put in a nursing home. And they, they didn't have to do that. In a government school, right? Why do they do that? Because they need to keep them out of trouble while they go work. Sorry, but daddy's got to go work, right? Mommy's got to go work. Here's what I'm trying to say. Yes, it's true that your deal with the corporation, maybe you're better off. You have a nice work environment. You get free food, uh, whatever, whatever. You got money. You could buy stuff. But there is always... Not always, but many times there is someone who pays the price. And my point is that the bill comes due. It wraps around. It comes but back. How does social, but how does socialism, how does socialism even attempt to solve that? Oh, well, what first of all, I, I'm even going to talk about how would, socialism, how would socialism even attempt to, to solve that? Well, so socialism, I'm even going to go all the way to communism, which I haven't even defined yet. Okay. But communism is a system in which each person gets uh, what they need. Okay, of to each according to their needs and from each according to their ability. Where do they get that stuff from? Who and who gets it? I can. Okay, so that's like a whole topic. That's what I'm saying. You want to get into that topic right but away? That is, that, that, is the, that is the reason why I think there won't be freedom. Okay. Because nobody's, because, because you have to have men with guns. And I am, I'm saying that right now, for many people, there is no freedom. You need, but, but I, that's why we said. Look the tenements in Hong Kong where they that's live. Why we said, that's why we said maximize. Yeah, those those tenements in Hong Kong look a lot like the way people lived in England at the beginning of the industrial age. Yeah, but and they I'm look sure, right now. I'm saying I'm sure, I know, and I'm sure it won't prove as China is industrializing. Hold on, let me just say a few things. We're talking about right now, not 100, 200 years ago. Hong yeah, but Kong, what, did, Hong but what Kong, did it look like 50 years ago? Hold up, Hong Kong is at the top of the list, and Singapore at the top of the list of you know economic freedom. Okay. okay. A lot of the indexes, people look to these as paragons of like, this is how you could be living. And what I've found when I looked at Hong Kong and I looked at Singapore is in fact, there was so much poverty that they actually expanded their public services. So we're talking about in the United States having a universal health insurance, a single payer health insurance. Well, it turns out in Hong Kong, it's government run. Most hospitals in Hong Kong, most hospitals in Singapore are government run 
and free and I'm, sure they're, and, I'm, and I'm sure they're run very poorly with a massive with a massive um with a with a massive infrastructure class who bleed the system and corrupt it in a way that is not I you you Gregory have lived in Russia and in America right I uh, barely lived in Russia I was one year old Russia. when I immigrated uh, okay yeah. so I lived I lived in South Africa I grew up in South Africa all right now because because the state medical system was so bad there when I grew up all of the people that could afford it were were were, were had private medicine like completely private you no know, like we had in medical insurance but it was like real Cadillac medical insurance now I'm just pointing out that health care <coughs> was amazing it was amazing and America and I've lived also I've lived in in, in Israel South Africa <coughs> Canada and the United States I, I, Canada, I, I just want to make the main point and then continue is that the government um, stepped in and almost had to provide a safety net and expand welfare, which they did a few years ago because people were just so much falling through the cracks. Four people living in a one-bedroom apartment, people didn't know each other, just had to... But, what is, but, what is, but that is right. That is right because almost capitalism, almost capitalism has allowed for the prosperity so that the government can can steal can steal tax dollars and claim to be... I would not call this prosperity, these people where you, living in... Uh, where, no, where, would you, where is the money? Where does socialism get the money to pay for other things for to, to okay so let's talk money. about it i said communism i'm not even like yeah, another okay. i talked about what does the world look like i am yeah. straight up talking about <laughs> communism okay good so, so where do i live under let, communism? Me, let me describe the situation I but yeah. again i want to i want to deal with mainstream definitions all right so communism okay let's look it up so communism on wikipedia here's what it says about what is communism communism is the left wing to far left Socio-political, philosophical, and economic ideology within the socialist movements. One type of socialism. It's pretty extreme. And, uh, the, you know, some countries like USSR believed that eventually they'll reach it. Okay. And some argue that Native Americans had it when they, you know, some people hunted and they shared all the stuff in common. They didn't own the land. In fact, uh, Engels, Marx and Engels were inspired by Native American tribes when they wrote a lot of their critiques. But anyways, um, here's what it is. The goal is the establishment of a communist society, okay, um, which is postulated to emerge from technological advances in the productive forces representing the ultimate goal and ideology of communism. Uh, centered around common ownership. Again, it does not involve coercion or the state necessarily. There's always some coercion, okay? It has like to involve coercion. It has to. Well, everything in private property involves coercion, right? It involves coercion when you're right. kicking out the... So it, the but yeah, but, but, but the coercion happens right away. You can't earn any money in communism. No, I'm saying it doesn't happen right away. If if you own 10,000 houses and someone is squatting in one of your houses, okay, then in a capitalist society, uh, you just go to the men with guns. You go and, and tell them that, hey, I have this idea in my head that I own all these houses. And in fact, look, this bank... What do you, mean you, have the, what do you mean you have the idea in the head? <clears throat> if I worked my whole life, yeah. Instead of going on vacations and instead of go eating out and instead of buying shit, instead of going to movies, instead of buying crap, I saved that money up. I worked my life, my life. I extracted very money and worked my life. Then I decided to buy a house. I put an Airbnb, and then I decided, and then I and then, and I scrimped and scrimped and scrimped and took a, and took and took a loan from the bank, and then bought another house. And then slowly but surely, I made like got fifty houses. What do you mean I have some fucking idea in my head? Whose money is that? Whose house is that? It's All just right. outrageous. You're, it's like a fantasy. I remember this joke that this guy. Yeah, it's a fantasy. I have no, a friend that has his life like that. What you are describing the fantasy. No, no, hold on. The fantasy. Okay, I can believe that you. Uh, I can't find it right now. I can believe that you can scrimp and save and get one house. I could believe that. But do you seriously think that anyone who just happens to save enough money can one day have ten thousand houses? Do you think that sure. that's how it works? I have a friend. I have a friend. I have a friend who owns five houses in in, in Philadelphia. He's a Rebbe. He has no money. What he does is he bought. He went into the cheapest neighborhoods in America, took a huge risk, bought a house for fifty thousand dollars, started renting it out, got a good property manager, then refinanced on the loan, bought himself another house. Now he has two loans. He has an enormous amount of risk involved in that. Yeah. He's going to buy ten houses, then he's going to sell those and buy something in a nicer place. And what happens if what happens if the the loans if, if <coughs> God forbid if he falls ill or if the collateral underpinning the loan suddenly drops, like it just did with all the cryptos, 
And then look how many people lost their shirt. So he's taking on a ton of risk in order to have five houses. And I'm talking okay. about I'm talking about an organization that owns ten thousand houses. Okay. Yeah, what, if him, what, if, what, what, what if what if what if him and his best buddy get together? Start working together. <clears throat> Where do you think Ralph Hertzger made his money? You think if you they made get it together? Money? That doesn't give them the right to lord it over a million people or ten thousand. So what is, of course it does because we're they, of course it does. Of course it does. Who else? They the reason That's why they freedom was in order was in order to be able to to to, to produce value. So you okay? So I'm going to lay out my vision. In communism, I want I want I want to. The reason why I love capitalism for the most part, I don't even like okay. the word capitalism. But the reason why it works is because you you harness jealousy. And 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 uh, and um, you instead of relying on altruism, which is BS, you say if if I want to get, I don't believe it's BS in a general sense, but you don't have to, you can't rely on a society. What you say is if you want to be selfish, you have to provide value. <clears throat> Jeff Bezos, you can knock him for the diaper workers, so-called diaper workers at his work cam factory. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if they're really there. But even but but the point is that he has provided value to people. Oh, and there's no doubt that he's provided. And he's provided that tool. No, that no is doubt. Provided. In fact, I'll go further. I'll, I'll steal, man, what you're saying. The company he's built has helped deliver goods and, and helped maybe save lives during the pandemic and many other things. So it always helps the consumer. Capitalism always helps the consumer. But it happens to be that in order to get money in the first place, you have to be a producer. Okay. But how would, but how would, but how would socialism do better? I'm, okay, so let me let me. How would social? Tell me how. You need to give me enough time to even yes. like lay the yes. groundwork. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna not talk until you give me permission. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to breeze through this, but also be clear. So communism. Okay, we've talked about socialism. Socialism is about the common ownership, social ownership of the means of production. Okay, I've given examples. This was uh, housing cooperatives. This was credit unions. They cut out the landlord. They cut out the shareholder and they just deal with each other. OK, the tenants are the owners. So that's socialism. And I think that's great. It's an additional check and balance within the market system. I'm not saying get rid of the market system. I'm saying get rid of big states and corporations. Yes. And you're saying that, too. I, but I'm saying then once you get rid of them, people will get together and they will be deciding whether they want to have one guy like, like a king in, in charge of the you know, everything like a landlord or to have more of an egalitarian society where everyone has a say. So communism, communism is a more extreme version here where literally the means of production are either commonly owned or in fact uh, distributed uh, an exchange that allocates the products of uh, that are being produced to everyone in society. Now you may say you're so unused to that. You're like, Oh, that's not fair. And also, how? where's the money going to come from? Where are the products going to come from? Where's everything going to come from? You're conditioned to support the current exploitive mentality. And what I mean by that is whenever a, a billionaire is to be taxed or, you know, uh, regulation is to be put uh, to help uh, disabled people or something, you, you'd be like, oh, but come on, that's going to put the brakes on the innovation and these job creators are going to be harmed. And I could tell you, no, they're not. They're not going to be harmed because the worst that happens is they dip below a billion dollars, which is when they join the rest of us and they have a lower tax rate. So that's and, and another thing is I'm an entrepreneur and I can tell you that I've never had an investor invest in my company because they got a tax break. OK, if I go to an investor and they say, well, you got a tax break, why don't you give some of that money to me? They're going to laugh in my face. They would like to see demand. But in order for there to be demand. People need to have a disposable income. People need to have a safety net in order for them to even make choices like let's go out to the restaurant. So good economies can actually be produced by refusing to enforce evictions. Having a moratorium on evictions, in fact, leads to a better society because suddenly people aren't worried about it. Where am I going to find my next home and putting everything in boxes every two months? And they're not thinking, how am I going to feed my kids? They're focused on more. But I don't think people, again, you, you make this assertion that where I'm saying, where does the money come from? So money. Okay. So let's talk about the money in my society that I envision, right? Everyone receives a universal basic income and I'll explain what happens to that money. No, no, but where did it, where did it come? Where, tell me where it came from. Okay. So here's where the money comes from. Our current money supply comes from banks. Okay. 
they are often owned by shareholders. These banks employ underwriters. The underwriter decides to create money out of thin air by essentially uh, looking at a business that wants to get money or a consumer. Now they have consumer credit. They say, okay, this person over the next 15 years is going to repay this loan at this percent. So I can understand small percentage rates, but now it's almost like it's going to be approaching usury where it's going to be like huge percentage rates. And here's the thing. Where is that money going to come from? There's not enough money in existence to pay back every loan plus interest. So what happens is the government has to come in and help out the banks by printing more money. Okay. And the whole system is constantly creating more money in order to pay back the money with interest. Now, where does all that money currently come from? It comes from banks making guesses about whether a business will be solvent in 10 years. They may be wrong. And when they're wrong, the money is removed from the economy through what? Defaults and restructuring loans, which is what's going to happen when a lot of people start feeling the crunch. And it happens already. So what I'm trying to tell you is where our current money system is coming from, the banks issue the money, and then the banks also redeem uh, the, the money starts out at the bank, goes around in a circle, and is eventually extinguished at that bank. And that bank cares about nothing except profit. It doesn't care about the good it does for society or that the loan will help people. In fact, the people who need the loan the most are the people who are least likely to get it. So the banking system is where the money currently comes from and where the money disappears. Okay, that's the current money supply. And then now I can tell you the other alternative and tell me if that is that is that is that is not the current money supply, but we'll we'll I know that what 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 the great idiot Richard Wolf would probably think. No, it it's my own. It's my own. It's uh, it's, it's a it's, it's 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 what you have described is 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 function um um bordering on Harry Potter. It's just it's just okay. Well, let's, let me ask you. It, it is right. It is it is. I will grant you that our money supply has been corrupted by central banks, and that in and 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 certainly diluted. Not just central banks, all banks. I, 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 well, that is, well, that is, the, that is the point of first, of first, of first issuance. So that's really where the corruption happens. Um, well, and I agree with you that they have diluted the, the money, but they are diluting the money. They're not. It's not value is created out of thin air. There are goods and services that take that are in this country. When you add money to the money system, like we did, there were consequences. That's why we saw a rapid inflation because you created money independent of independent of independent of of the, of the market hold up so, it's not so, independent the underwriter does take a look at your business and say okay it's pretty solid and the bank's interest no, is not to just give out money to is, no, what I'm saying is when when congress passed all that spending during covid so yeah. what happened what happened the uh, what happened was people spent it back into the economy on the very no 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 that's that's not that's why i say people like richard wolf have a complete or where do you think the money goes when people get no, a check in the mail? No, because because if you dilute the money supply, one second, I don't see you recording. Are you still recording? I am recording, yes. I don't see your face moving. Oh, my face is not moving now? Yeah. I'm oh, mine isn't moving either. Okay, wait. I don't, I don't think we're still recording. It is recording. It is recording. I can guarantee you that. I see it here. Uh, you want me to pause it and then we'll do a third recording. All right. Oh. All right, it's recording. All right, sure. So, um, but I'm not. I don't see myself moving. Should I? Should I refresh the screen? No, no. Just stay there. I see you. Okay. And, uh, sorry, but okay. So, here's the thing, man, is that our current money supply is issued by banks. Do you disagree with that? The majority of our money, when you pay with a credit card or you Take a loan from a bank and you pay. No, it represents, it represents, I understand how fractional reserve banking works and I understand how the Fed works. And both of those are extremely corrupting because of the way, the way like um, a lot of deposits work in this country. But in general, that money supply is based, at least lo loosely correlated to the actual stuff that is being produced or the services that are being produced. So, so, meaning, and that is why, during yeah, COVID, nice they, that is why during COVID, one second. That is why during COVID, when they drastically increased the money supply, even though you're right, people went and spent that money, but then all that happened was the goods and services went up. That's what causes inflation because there were too many dollars chasing right. too few goods. That's why communism, when you say we we'll just guarantee everybody everybody a sweater in the winter and, and a bathing suit in the summer, um, where does that bathing suit and swimming and, 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 and sweater it's, come it's, from? Well, so the other way around. We already know where it comes from. It comes from banks deciding to issue money. What's interesting is no, yeah. where does the where is the cotton 
and the, I'm about and, to tell you. I'm about to tell you. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, and who makes the zippers? The, the, who, hold on, who, hold on, hold on. Who makes on. the dyes? I'll tell like, you. I'll describe the alternative system to you. But before I yeah. do, before I do, the current system has one missing piece. Yeah, they issue the money and they send it to people, but they don't tax it back on the other side. Meaning, it's very politically, uh, you know, problematic to raise taxes on the very wealthy. Okay, um, and uh, in general, to raise taxes. So what's happening is that people are getting money, it's being issued, then the only way it's taken out of circulation is people defaulting and uh, not paying back uh, the bank. And then it causes the banks to have but one uh, second, balance sheets that are out of whack. Okay? Who should take tax? Who should, who should be paying taxes? So who should be collecting the taxes? Here's what should happen. Um, right now, in the last two years, we have... Essentially, we had inflation because of supply chain issues, etc. Instead of the government, which is our elected representatives, passing a bill to, for example, raise taxes on pollution, raise taxes on Pigovian taxes of many kinds. Like, why are they creating all this plastic? Why are they dumping it everywhere? Never mind the fossil fuels. I'm saying, like, insects are dying, you know, a huge decline in populations. Farmland is being turned into, essentially, uh, deserts. and People are just overfishing and cutting down their forests, everything. Instead of taxing those things to create less of them, right, to put make it more costly to externalize the cost, instead, the government does nothing. So the Fed, the Federal Reserve, they, they try to curb inflation, but their only tool is to raise interest rates. And so it, instead of doing the fiscal policy fix, but they created monetary they, policy, they, which is the Fed, which is all they can do. And that's is, what led to these collapses. This is because we have a completely dysfunctional government, which which, yeah. doesn't, which 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 passes the buck on their only actual responsibilities and rather decides to get involved in bullshit like which person chooses bathroom and uh and and all this type of nonsense. Meanwhile, well, it affects less people. Country, it's obviously the country, the without country, making a value judgment, it is it affects like 0.1% of people. Whereas, like health insurance affects everybody. Oh, no, but they don't want to touch. They don't want to touch. We have a government that, that that has abdicated its responsibility when it comes to war. They've given the power to the to the executive when it rests with Congress. They've given the power of the purse to 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 the um to the Fed. And then this is how you have like a lot of these disastrous consequences. And I agree that it that it, that is that is certainly not perfect. It's it's terrible for certainly if you live in a, one of our enemies' countries, that would really suck for you. Um, but 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 socialism does not have a better solution because you're denying the basic facts. Of, I'm talking you're, you're about denying, you're denying the basic facts of economics. No, so like, I'm talking like, about communism. So in communism, you have two things. You're you're supposed to satisfy two things. Just like the Fed tries to have like massive uh, em, minimize unemployment and also minimize inflation, right? As dual mandates. What if somebody doesn't want to work? In the communist oh, hold on. So they will have to be paid more in order to work. If they don't want to work, they live in a subsistence in a small shoebox apartment, but they live. They have enough to live without. And what, if, and, what if, and what if everybody decides not to work? Why would everybody decide not to work? I don't know why. You have huge swaths in this country. Go down to. Right, that's go down, liberty. Go see, down to. Have... Go down to. Go down to. Go down to Skid Row. You'll yeah. see plenty of people that have decided to give up on life. Look, these oh, are do. these are a fraction of a fraction of the country. No, it's well, becoming more of a problem. The more it's you becoming more of a problem because of gent gentrification no, and everything no, costs more. No, no, you think the rents where these people no, are homeless? No, that is not why they're homeless. It is not an economic. Why problem. are the rents so high? Not, they're, they're homeless they're, because you're shipped there no, by other states. But anyway, they are, they are homeless there. because they are homeless because they have no they have no community. Most of these homeless are not from California. You see, you would, you would, you would, you would, you would ask me the question. You would say hold to up. me, I'm, you would I'm say not. me, why? Uh, hold up. I, I just want to finish describing the alternative system because I think. Okay. I don't want you to attack a strong. You're not just tell me where I need to know where the button on the on the shirt that you are giving to the person that doesn't work comes from. I want to know where the button comes from. Increasingly, Who it comes from robots. Button? A robot made that button on your shirt. Okay, the robot has a thousand thread count. Which people could not do. Oh, so we live in the perfect world where where everything is now automated, and then we just you know we we're just, increasingly just... living in that world. Yes. Okay, great. So we're ready in the future, and that solves all the problems. Well, we we need a system that can adapt to growing automation. Okay, capitalism cannot adapt. 
it already has it is it is the only system that has adapted capitalism sure look at the great depression so they automated the fact well, you, you always have to go back 60 years to be able to find an example every single country that has come out of communism and then socialism has done better any country that has moved towards freedom has increased i've just shown you hong kong i've shown you a lot of places which haven't done better all of those all of your examples which i have not researched come come before 1950. you have to go to the past and the reason and and and, and i already can go to the 70s where 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 was the disaster why I okay, north korea depression. right now it's a disaster let me tell you why i bring up the great depression because in economics, uh, there's essentially a three-sector model, okay? And it's not everyone subscribes to it, but it, many people. Uh, it says that, look, first of all, there is the primary sector of activity, extraction of raw materials, okay? Then you manufacture the materials, that's secondary. And finally, you have like service industries, and then maybe intellectual property is a fourth uh, sector. So here's the thing, is that first you automate the uh, let's say one of the sectors so if you look at a, a picture of farms like a picture of a farm from uh early 20th century right where you're going to find is there's animals and people working the farms okay you're going to find a lot of people having to till the land and this is how it was throughout history so what happened in the 20s is that they automated this okay they were able to go from this the combines okay so okay. Have, so this is important because this is what automation does when okay. a combine is used on a farm it eliminates jobs okay that's I fine it eliminates jobs one person could do the job of like 20 people but here is the thing man all those people are getting laid off everyone is acting in their own individual self-interest it means a farmer every year has to plant more and reap more and they say well i'm a hard worker i'm just gonna work more and the thing is all that does is that exacerbates the problem every year because yes that's what i was talking about everyone acting in their own individual self-interest works in the microcosm area however on the macro scale the negative externalities build up so every worker that's laid off okay is has to they don't have any more money to spend what you're describing is the opposite that we see it's the opposite what you're describing that, again, in, countries that have strong, in countries that have strong that have that have that have that have that have overarching governments and not strong free markets if you look in the middle of africa if you look in these brutal dictatorships in egypt and iran and all these countries that you want to live in if you look in countries like that that's where you see the boot you look of at dictatorships i just no, one second one second listen to me when yeah. you see the boot of 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 of, of regulation on people's necks that is where you see these problems. I'm not when talking about at, regulation. But when I'm you look at when you look at free societies, you see you see you see technology increasing prosperity. Sure, creative destruction. People get laid off, but they find something else to do. Look at the world. There's look at America. Coming. Is there people any economic doing. law that guarantees that there will always be enough jobs for people? Where's I, 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 if 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 there isn't one, then then socialism will be worse off. Because the only difference in socialism and communism, and I know you deny this, but the only real di um, um, the, the difference between capitalism and, social and, and, and communism is that is that you, you're going to have to have people controlling other people. No, you're no. You have to do it. You, you just, already have people controlling other actually, people in because capitalism. You won't, because you won't tell me what happens to Frank in your world. I'm, a, I, I'm about to tell you what happens. Yeah. I'm about to tell you what happens. So, okay. First of all, in both systems, there's people controlling other people or there's coercion in either system. In other words, in order to maintain some sort of order and enforce something, you're going to need to coerce people, whether it's collectivism or whether it's a private landlord evicting you, okay? Regardless, there is going to be force, okay? So you could call it by any name. You could say taxation is theft, but then you think extracting rents is not theft. We just taxation. call it force. Yeah, taking money from somebody, certainly, um, certainly rent is not theft and taxation is theft. Okay, if rent is not theft, then if I have Disney World Corporation, it's run by Disney Corp, and yeah. it's charging rent to a business in order to operate inside Disney World, okay? Right. Is that, in your opinion, that's not theft. That's normal, right? No one's forcing you. It is an arrangement where both sides think they're getting the better, better end of the deal. Okay, great. So right. it's not theft, correct? Right. Okay. So right. this uh, town in Florida, Boca Raton, okay, I happened to visit it. Yeah. It's also privately built, just like Disney World, okay? 
This guy right. built it and he ran out of money and he turned it over to the people living there. Okay. So if you look at the history, uh, okay, it was first it was by Native Americans and they had a bunch of communism in there with hunter gatherer society. Then the Spanish uh, called it Boca de Ratones, which is about rats. But then this guy, Addison Misner, okay, he created yeah. a resort town, he built it, he architected it, okay. Until him, it was an unincorporated farming town with a population of 100. So he built this as the foremost resort city. Later on, he became bankrupt, okay? And he just gave it over to, they had to give it over to the people living there. Here's my point. The place is now owned by its residents. It is run democratically. And if you agree with me that Disney World is entitled to collect rent from businesses that operate in its jurisdiction, why can't Boca Raton, uh, which did not come about through any coercion, the guy built it, he gave it away, he didn't give it away, he went bankrupt. So now, just because it's run by dem by the people who live there, suddenly they can't collect a tax for operating your business in, in if that. You'll, if, you'll, if you'll prove to me that the people of Boca Raton get together, they all own private property and they all agree within their private property, if you live in this private property, you have to. If you stay here, you have to pay some sort of like levy. I have no problem with that. It's a collective property. It's not just that they live on their own private lot. It's that the city is now collectively, through democratic voting, governed. Right? They I don't know. I don't know what you mean. I don't know because I don't know what you mean when you say, when you say like, like I, I, I recognize private property. I don't recognize any other system. Well, the system here is that they get together just like the Athenians with their democracy, I mean, you don't and they need decide need by voting what to do. But 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 who gets the vote? Does everybody uh, the there vote? The, the people registered to live there. That's who. Registered to live. What do you mean? What does that mean, the, the people registered to vote? Well, there. there is a land. Are we, talking about, are we specifically talking about the people that like own the place? There is literally land that comprises Boca Raton, okay? That's and a specific who land. land. And who owns the land? Various people own little parts of the land. Okay, fine. So, so I think that people that own private property have the right to make 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 terms to 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 to, to, to be with their property. Hold on, on yeah. their property, but can they get together and can they vote on on whether to tax foreign businesses? Right, to, I'll make uh, this real easy. If I own a house and you're my neighbor, we can collectively agree to have to enforce the same rules in our land. If your situation is 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 the mirror image of that. Then, then so be it. I don't have a problem with socialist ideas coming like a, like a, I don't have a problem with a kibbutz. If people want to get together and make a bad decision and live like a bunch of why is that like bad? A, why is that a bad decision to have a public? Because I, I think because I think ultimately, which is why these things collapse. Because I think ultimately, socialism is a bad idea. But, but do I don't understand. Have a problem, I, I'm I saying, have, do you understand? Without the USSR and these oppressive regimes, I am saying a town can get together and decide, I want to build a park. But there is no town, right, but there is no, okay, but there is no town that says like, okay, we're going to collectivize all the businesses and we're going to say the ice cream shop reports to the the, the, the town and then the real estate broker reports to the town. To some extent, the, the ice cream shop oh, does. Because, because you're bringing a, a evidence from a city, which is a capitalist city, and you've not proved your idea. What do you that mean it's a you have not I, proved You have not proved your idea at all. That which would that, that somehow idea. somehow that somehow rent is theft. I still haven't seen any evidence to that. I didn't say rent I, is theft. I'm saying taxation is not I, theft. I'm saying I it it depends who's taxing. Right. So if a city that came about through voluntary building and voluntary transactions, let them do whatever they let them do whatever they want. But they I suspect. Want to tax, but I suspect. Want to, in, so but I suspect. But I suspect in Boca Raton, the businesses are not collectively owned. I suspect I can get an Airbnb. You know, and that's Airbnb not the Raton. point. It's not that. The but business. that is. But is that is the point because socialism will fail if it is collectively. What do you owned. think socialism is? I'm telling you that a group of people. So let's talk about Frank. Frank now has a million dollars. Okay, socialism is democracy, right? Meaning people vote. Even the 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 janitor can vote on what the corporation will do. Okay. Socialism you, is found on college campuses when you have the student body president and they elect. When you, have, when, you, when you have a bunch of kids who have never earned a dime and have never have never thought about anything. More than the professors, than everyone engages in democracy where they elect the heads of the department. I mean, that's how it's run. Uh, it's there's aspects of socialism and aspects of capitalism in most organizations. That's fine. 
I'm here to simply say which aspect is more corrosive. You happen to, to uh, reference jealousy as a foundational principle. And my foundational principle is freedom from need. So you can... Yeah, but freedom from... I am saying that your theoretical preference would probably be better if it wasn't bonk. We're there about to live in a society with no such thing as freedom from need. How would you define need? You say everybody that's gets needs. Talk. No, but you you define need. You need somebody else who is above to define who gets to define my needs. No one gets to define, define any, you. You are. Needs. You, you needs. are each according to their needs and each according to their Correct. Want, their right? needs. But what if oh, I need? But what if I need a jet? Well, it has to be, you have to be honest with yourself. Can but you who gets that? to decide who's being honest, Gregory? No, this is the thing. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Humans have things in common. We're biological creatures. Most of us have common needs, like how much we're going to eat, how much air we're going to breathe. Should it be clean air? These are. What are, you, what are you talking about? Look at the average person, the decisions they make. One person's eating a peanut butter sandwich. The next person's eating a salad with caviar. Yeah, but I can where tell you, you. Where do you? No, but where do you? You where do you get off saying that people have similar needs? Okay, so I guess the question do, is, do, do, do you what mean, are do, needs? Do you mean? Do you mean that you would then say, um, okay, you need this much calories to survive? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get you up, put you on a scale, get your height, get 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 um. I'm, uh, I'm uh, give you, give you, a, yes, no, that, listen, something. it's like this. Because you're gonna need, because you're gonna need a huge administrative state to no, deal with that. Nobody needs because a huge administrative corrupt. state. Because who gives the money, Gregory? Who gives the money? Okay, so let's who talk about sending, the alternative. Who is sending me the subsistence check? Who let's is sending me the key to the state apartment? Who is sending me the shoes? Your who? community. Your community does. But who is? But but why? But who is managing that money? Where did that money come from? We traded, obviously, with some other community. I build build autonomous blockchain applications, just to give you an example. Okay? Your question is like, who is going to run the internet? Which agency is going to be responsible? No. It's like it's decentralized. So let me tell you something, okay? Smart contracts don't live anywhere. You probably know this, right? The smart contract is, is in the ether. Now, if every day it does what's called an airdrop and just issues a bunch of coins to everybody, sure that dilutes the coin supply and that's why you need taxation to remove money from the economy oh who is making the shoes you're okay you keep you it's like whack-a-mole let me answer one question and i'll tell you i don't because okay. you're, you're 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 asking where the money comes from you're the cheating. money the money okay money is simply an asset it's a fungible asset that happens to be the most liquid asset in the community whether it's shells or rice when people say shelling out, it comes from Native Americans who used to use shells, okay? Shoguns in Japan used to use rice. They used to be paid in rice. Whatever the money is, happens to be right now, it's a bunch of green bills that were introduced uh, during the Civil War. Okay, the no, green- it's not, but it's not. It isn't random. The Talmud discusses what money should be, and it talks about something which is fungible, still maintains its value, but is not so valuable that you wouldn't want to walk around with it. Right. It's usually the hierarchical thing so that you can carry your value, you can take your time, and put it into a wallet. Because that's, that's ultimately why, what it is, right? That's why we have representative money, which is paper money. Right. And now we have cryptocurrency and digital currency. Okay. So we have digital currency, people are trying to phase out the paper money so it can be more trackable and they can extract more uh, taxes from you and, and the, in the name of money laundering, they call it. But think of the children. But anyway, yes, uh, they want to make it all digital and tracked. But the idea is who issues it? And this is what you have to understand. It's our society. We can organize however we want. If we want to say that every day everyone wakes up with ten dollars in their wallet, then that's what it's going to be. And then no, they're no, going to no. But that is a false statement that has to be called out every single time. That Why? is a false statement because the ten dollars is meaningless if you can't buy anything with it. Of course, you can buy. Look, but how would you? Who decides how many shoes to make? Who decides how many shirts? The market to make? decides that. But how does the market decide if 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 you if can't what? have a million dollar? You can't have a factory, according to you. I'm not saying everyone has a million dollars. I'm saying everyone has just the enough every day to buy necessities. So every day they go out and they buy the thing that they but want who, the most. Given, but who is making? Money. But who is making the shoes? Hold on, before I get to who's making the shoes, I am trying to tell you what needs are. Needs is when you have a limited supply of money. And you decide what to buy first. 
but who decides what who decides what the needs are the market decides every individual decides every now, and again, every now and again i would like to smoke a joint does the market does the market sure. supply that joint then you would have to work if you don't have enough money to buy both food and a joint or you but can how, so what if i want what if i want a joint and 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 a an airplane how would i what would i how much money am i allowed to earn to be able to do that you want to stop you want to limit me you want to limit you don't only want to provide a safety net you want to limit me from 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 from, if from everyone you, gets the same amount of money every day be it a hundred dollars a day or ten dollars a day depending on where you live it's a it's the same amount of money i don't care what it is because mathematically it will even out so ten dollars a day and you decide where to spend it i guarantee you the things where you spend it on most often are your needs okay and those people then become rich because they become really good at seeing the needs and at a certain point at a certain number you're going to cap them tax all their money how do they, wait and how do they become rich you lost me there by getting a subsistence income and spending it only on food how are you becoming rich because the guy selling the food somebody will figure out how to make something really interesting and at a good price and then they'll be selling that and then they'll That's make a market a i i'm okay with the market but you but you you them. you think but you think so that in this society i start getting good at making food so then people come to me for their food so then i start hiring people to work in my food factory no problem. So at what point do you take my money when i can buy a jet when i can buy an extra factory Look, i i, I, can I feel like you've, been, you've been so whipped by the capitalist system you can't fathom no real and what point who is making who is making the I'm stuff tell you okay ask me a question yes so, who's making the uh, shoes people, okay so can we understand people are waking up every day they have ten dollars in their wallet yeah. okay I, that's just the number whatever it is okay right. but they all have it so every day the money is being diluted obviously there's more money supply every day okay that also means that if a society would like to they can now tax things they don't they want less of like pollution right or like corporations coming in and harming people they will make it more costly because who the makes, market makes, is not going to do it for them. Decisions? Who makes those decisions? I'm sorry, you lost me a second. Who okay. makes those the fiscal? Okay, so the the monetary decision of issuing money is just built into the smart contract. It's built into the system, right? You move to the town. That's just what happens. The town has its it own. Never and it never and never gets adjusted. It could get adjusted. They okay. So you're asking who makes a decision to adjust? Sure. That's. that's that's the one job that Stalin wanted, right? So you no, it me, was not one person. It's every person, every so producer. Every time, so every time they want to make a policy to start hold up, every get everybody producer, together and have a vote. Every producer in that town, the baker, the hairdresser, whatever, as long as they're doing work, is a voter. Okay, and they so you vote. have to be a voter. So in your system, you can only vote unless you're a producer. Well, I I personally would want everyone to vote, every citizen. But I spoke to economists who made a good point, and they've changed my mind. They said the productive class is the one who really is incentivized to properly set the level of UBI. Because right. if right. the people who aren't producing anything are the ones that are going to set the level of UBI, they're just going to keep voting it higher and higher because they're not. No. So what if you're producing a lot more than someone else? Do you get more votes or produce a vote? No, everyone gets the same amount of votes. Right. Um, what if so? So people don't just get get together and vote in what they wanted. Some all, all the 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 the. the the camera guy, the camera guy, and the and the, and the mace guy, and the and the fencing guy will get together and say, you know, we order, we order require people to spend more money on security, and they'll just corrupt the whole system. Look, it's not about corrupting the system; it's about the the current system is very corrupt, and some people, you know, they say that the, the current system doesn't force you to buy everything yeah. based on based on someone else's opinion. The current system makes it that you're unable to buy even the necessities of life. But I, but I don't see that. You keep describing another place because in this country, most people have the necessities. In this country, yes, but in this country, even in this country, many people die while on the waiting list for the VA. For example, they die. Yeah, because that's because that's run by the state, and it sucks. Obviously. Oh, fine. Let's say the VA runs by the state, and it sucks. Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff is run by the free market. How come these people choose to die rather than get a heart transplant through the market system? Because they can't afford it. That's why it's just access. It is not. It is not. It is not. It is not true. Look at the health outcomes. Why did they die? Tell me. Why did all these people, uh, instead of opting out of the socialist system of the VA, right, or the communist yeah. system, why yeah. did they just die? Why don't they just go to use the capitalist system 
and get a job, man, and just pay for their million dollar operation. So they were supposed to be getting free health care from that was supposed to be the reward. Why do they need it? According because to you, that was the payoff. Take care because about that's why. Because that's why they risked life and limb. That was no, my question deal. is: Why would the market? Why, according to you, the market system will take care of us all? So why did I? They don't, need I them? never. I never made that claim. I've never made that claim. I. So what happens to the people who? Fall, I, I, I. I. I just fall assume, through the cracks. I assume. I assume that the market system is way more preferable to the not market system. I the market system is I more certainly, I certainly accept, I certainly accept under the market system, some people will starve to death. Some people won't have their hey, base. Hold up. That's a monstrous statement you've made there. Oh. You, certainly, you certainly accept that some people of will starve course. to death. If I, I, I accept, I, let me, I, I, of course I accept that. You know, I, I, once, debated, I, once, uh, I once debated a coworker who right. presented the single strongest challenge to my libertarian philosophy and threw me completely off for about for a couple of weeks. Like I didn't know his answer. Do you want to know what he asked me? What? He said to me, he said to me, hey, Shub, you are a big talker with your libertarianism, but maybe he he's a non-Jew from Canada and his father deals very much is like it has some sort of like frozen vegetable factory and he deals very much with the Orthodox Kashrus agency. So he had a lot of friends who were Orthodox. Get to the so point. He to me, so he said to me, Hey, Shab, I have a really good question for you. Maybe you're such a libertarian because you are part of a community that will take care of your basic needs if ever you fall and other people are not. And that's so, right. like, your view is heavily skewed by that. And that is a really interesting, that's a really interesting question. What I'm saying, I mean, maybe the reason why is it your family, the people right. that have a family, sure. the people meaning that have maybe, a community? Meaning maybe, but maybe that's I'm, my whole point, man. That no, is no, no, that's my, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, let me, and let me, and let me, and let me speak it out. Meaning maybe I'm full of shit. I mean, maybe the re only reason why I'm a so I'm a libertarian capitalist is because I'm really, I'm a socialist. Yeah, you're such lucky. a rugged uh, and capitalist. I'm, and I'm yeah. lucky, and I'm lucky enough to live in a socialist world. So therefore, I can be as capitalist as I want because I know I'm taking right. care of. That's a really good question on what I said, on what I, well, on, on my position. And this is my answer. This is my answer. The state, unfortunately, for many people, has removed the sense of community in the world. Um, in the in meaning, meaning like this. I get a lot from my community, and I know if God forbid I fall on bad times, my community would take care of me. But that 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 support is not without strings attached. It requires some sort of moral moral expectations. What has happened with the state is, which is why, which is why the inner city family has been absolutely decimated, is because they have given money out without expectations. You cannot give, you cannot say welfare open ended. You cannot say give. It creates the worst, most perverse incentive. It creates single family homes, which is dis, which is a, which is which is a scourge on on on, on society. It creates know, a single creates, family it, home it, is it, created. The single family home is created because the women and the men are called to work in corporations. No, no it is not true. Yes. It is created okay. by it is created by welfare. It did not exist until the New Deal. Only a single factor. It, I'm sorry, I'm to do. it did not exist until if you look at if you look at the average African. Yeah, but also women didn't work in corporations. No, it, if you look at the average African American home before yeah. before before the Great Society before LBJ, you'll see. You know what else happened before the Great Society? Women were homemakers, and only one of the people worked. Okay, it was a bread. I, don't, I, don't, I think I think that already ended in in in, in World War Two, when a lot of women were called to do male jobs. But we can we the point is the point. You, you a lot of these things came 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 at the same time. But the point is, by the way, just the uh, is, just I as think an aside, people free money creates a perverse incentive. The social not, political uh, the so you think first yeah. of all, cre giving out unconditional money actually creates a more moral society. Because people aren't uh, sneaking around trying to say that they're disabled when they're no longer disabled, they're able-bodied, but they still want to collect the disability benefits. They, you know, people can share their salary freely. I think you're. I think you're. I think you're. I think you're. Um, I think you're solving the edge case. No, I, I think, think look. Uh, the the essence. By the essence of capitalism, and look, I'm an employer. The essence of capitalism is you don't reveal all your cards. You don't put out all your dirty laundry because if everyone knew how uh, how much it costs for you to make your product, okay. They wouldn't actually pay you that extra premium. Everyone is keeping secrets in capitalism because they're all trying to get one over on each other. That's but the only way to survive. But they are providing. So people have to do. People have to be smart about how they spend money. They have to figure out what's valuable towards them. They have to make decisions. That's, That's what, what I'm trying to hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Kind of like everything, being you're saying, everything you're saying. They have to make decisions. Uh, there can't be a coercive state. 
I totally agree with you. That's the whole thing. You keep thinking that yeah. socialism you, implies a coercive state. Look, I'm talking you about are, because you are not going to. Who is you have not answered at what point Frank became became a uh, became a um, a capitalist pig, part of the bourgeois. Who well, the other the other thing that the other thing that when I was he, when did he start? Is when all these start? people that graduated from Frank's academy and started up their own businesses. Why do they still pay Frank? Like, why do they still they, pay because Frank? they think? Because they think it is in their interest to Why? carry to, to have Frank's brand. Frank has built up a name after after decades of of, of 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 working hard, and they think paying that is why a lawyer who finishes school goes. So to I, I can tell you for a fact with another Italian guy here in New York, because I know this. Frank actually his name was Frank. Frank Lombardi. This may be a better example because it's real. Started a pizza shop. He came to the United States. He started Frank Lombardi. Lombardi's Pizza. This is where Totono's Pizza came from. This is where Patsy Grimaldi that I met came from. This is literally what happened. These guys that trained under him started their own pizzerias, and you know how much they pay him? Nothing. They don't use his brand. In fact, uh, okay. Patsy Grimaldi sold his naming rights to Grimaldi's, and then he sold naming rights to Patsy's. So that's that's, wonderful. Why so that's Patsy's. so wonderful. So then if that cre- – so, 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 so people have the own – so I'm not against that. No, what I'm, I'm trying not to talking about is, that case. I, a, I, a real, I, had, I had a different story. I had a in, different in story. A real, in a, look, we're both talking about a society without coercive states. No, you're not. But I, so I, I'm I, is in my society, in my I society, no, I'm saying in my society, everyone gets a UBI. All so, so they first and foremost get enough food, and we have the level of UBI, enough, and we can measure this. You, you, you claim this is not measurable. Right. But you won't ever describe where the stuff comes from. I not only describe where it comes from, I'm telling you, okay, here, I'm going to go step by step. Look at the screen here, okay? Step one, the town issues its own currency. It comes from the town deciding to launch its own currency. But Just this like, is the money. But where are the shoes? Tell me, where did Facebook come from? Somebody launched it. No, but where are the shoes? But don't tell me about the money. Where are the shoes? I'm a, look, you just asked me to tell you about the money. Let no, I asked you to tell me where the shoes are. I asked you to tell me where the shoes are. The shoes where are, are always shoes? being produced. The merchants who... Who, who is producing the shoes? Who is producing the same The same people that produce them now. But how do they have the capital to produce the shoes? That's where the money comes from. I'm trying to but tell they're you. Only getting a, they're only getting money to, to, to that's not that scale. Can I, can I look? There's, I'm literally walking you through this. Okay, six fine. Times. All right. Step one, issue your own currency, okay? You simply have to make sure that everyone in the town gets the currency, meaning even a homeless guy gets a $50 Android phone and he wakes up every day and he has some currency. By the way, he can also get job offers, things like sweep the streets, hand out flyers. He could do, be doing stuff. And earning more of it. Anyway, so you get this currency for doing very basic things. You could get more of it by doing a job. Okay. Next, you give this currency out to people that do things you want, like my, like help kids, uh, you know, um, uh, mentor them, or clean the streets, or whatever charity. Okay, you give people for their hours. There, these are called time time banking and time hours. Next. You get merchants to accept it. So, for example, I'm working right now with Vegas, uh, Vegas coin. We want to make it so that you go to a casino and you say, OK, we've got this new form of currency, Vegas coin. And so you don't have to accept it. But if you do accept it, you can advertise that you're supporting the kids of Vegas and you're supporting the charities. All these charities are issuing the currency. OK, and all of the businesses voluntarily decide to accept it. Then the next thing you do is you start selling this currency to tourists who come to your city and you give a discount on everything in the city. And now suddenly there's money behind it. So now if these merchants want to cash out some amount, they can because there is now a fund. Okay, Finally, one thing is we're coming up. We're really coming against time. Can okay. we start from here for the next – we'll plan the next we'll one? Cut, yeah. So anyway, I just want to – can I just do for yes. two minutes? Two yes. minutes. Yeah, okay. Okay. What you do then is the the businesses, the merchants, tell the people working for them that they can accept the currency, okay? That they, the employees, can accept the currency and they'll pay them more than they would in dollars. And the reason they do this is because the employees can only spend the currency back with the with the city, with the merchants in the city, okay? Unlike dollars, which can leave the city, this cannot leave the city. So what generally happens is you get a currency that circulates in the city and all of a sudden... You could create your own fiscal policy. You don't have to wait for the federal government. You can fund all your projects. You can actually tax back what you don't like. And so the idea is what I'm trying to tell you is 
every community should have its own currency, its own money supply, because then all your questions, where does it come from? Where does it go? The community issues it. It gives no, it. This is people. not you. You think money is an end in itself. It's it's like it's it's no, a very it's, corrupting. It's very corrupting. Well, it's because you, it, because you describe because money should be used first and foremost to satisfy the needs of the people. But, and you, but money, but money can only yachts. support the needs if the needs exist to be supported. The needs always exist. That's not yeah. true. That's people. not true. They didn't always exist. Why should they always exist? Why should we be picked? Why should shoes be made? You haven't described where the shoes come from yet. Where are the shoes from? People need to wear shoes because otherwise their feet will... So, but where... Who is making the shoes? The same people that make them now. They just accept your new... No, because who is in charge of the business? The same people that are in charge now. But that's not true. You're against... You're against Bezos. You're against people getting... The main difference in my system is that you'll have to pay people more to do dirty jobs like clean the sewers or nuclear waste. You'll have to pay them more instead of taking but won't, but won't but but don't aren't you against coercive coercive um yes work? that's what i'm saying right now it's coercive because you're taking advantage and you think coercive. and you think ubi solves the whole communist the whole the whole issue of, of, of I, I would even say that it would make unions obsolete because the uh the imbalance between the employer but and you, but employee you still would think, but don't you subscribe to the the the, the labor theory of value where you where no, where, where, where 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 an employee is, is automatically being exploited no, I don't subscribe to that theory. No. Look, uh, it wasn't just Karl Marx. It was David Ricardo and others who may have had those uh, those ideas. But what I'm telling you... Is Richard that, Wolff, the great idiot, believes that. Okay, I am does. telling you... I'm not Richard yeah. Wolff. I agree with Richard Wolff on many things. Right. I, I don't agree with Noam Chomsky on some things. I agree with him on other things. What I'm telling you is this, and we'll pick up next time, is this. Let the people keep doing what they're doing. I am just saying a voluntary alternative and you should support this to the big banks and the big governments okay, is that so we, I see that you're, wait, I see we that you're not a communist though so that's great i am a communist but a libertarian communist libertarian communist but you're, the, the people do not may hold in, in your system the people do not maintain ownership of the means of production they collectively maintain it it's just the organization is small it's a neighborhood you know, and you agree with those things as a libertarian. You agree that a kibbutz or a neighborhood should be able but, to. But, but Amazon, but Amazon still goes on existing. Amazon's too big. The fact that Amazon can squeeze its warehouse workers to the point where they pee in bottles is not. But good. how would you stop something that big from from falling? By giving those workers and everyone in America money, so they can buy food without peeing in bottles. So they'll. So Amazon has to pay them a living wage and a better wage, just because otherwise they won't show up to work. That's why. I no one's coercive, any, anyone, okay? And, and frankly, the last thing I want to say, and I think it's important, is that in your system, no matter how many houses you own, you think it's your right to take the men with guns, the courts, and the banks, and you collude with those systems to evict these peaceful people who never did anything to you, never had a problem with you in day in their life. That's because you, you think, think... Hold on. And in my system, the courts will simply decline to use violence on your behalf. That's less violence. That's not more violence. What That's are you talking violence. about? But who owns that building? Ownership is a coercive system once it's that big. So but Jeff Bezos owns all it's, of this. But, it's, but it, you, if you are you are describing a false ph- a philosophical idea that you're that you that you are that you're presenting a, a vague term that big, and you're saying whenever it gets that big, which which a, a term which you refuse to define. I'll define it. It's just Wait. listen. There's a transition where. And not, we're not really sure. You can own one no. house, two houses, but at some point, when you own ten thousand houses, at what point? Or what? You know at what point? At what point? At what point is it coercive? Look, at what point? If it's, if it's coercive, then it's always coercive. Well, at what point do you have the age of consent? Like it's an arbitrary point, but we know that if no, someone's it's, forty, no, it's not. It's not even. It's not similar at all, because that is a question of. At what age could could you say that someone has reached a certain level where they can make moral decisions? But everyone You're reaches saying, that level at a different age. That is not the same thing as saying if I scrimped and scrapped my whole life, and then I worked, and then I worked, and I worked like a dog, and I bought, and I bought an apartment house. building. That's you, two houses. But we're talking about ten thousand. But, but but how do you think people got rich in this country? Many ways. By, being, by making really good investments. By being smart. 
That's not the only way. A lot no, of right. all they every... can be all they can be corrupt politicians and their children. I agree that there's a different. You no, know, I had one guy tell me behind every great wealth there is a great crime. <laughs> And, and that's bullshit. And it's total bullshit. It's said by communists. Behind every great wealth, there's, a great, don't there's care. a great amount of I value. I just want the people on the bottom to keep receiving continuously every day some money. That's all I'm talking about. That is communism. That's one part of communism. You are not, you are not, you are, you are, you are lying. Because, because, because when you are saying that you are going to give them a thousand dollars every day, that means you are, or I mean, ten dollars every day, whatever it is. In you're the extracting form of... that money. You are extracting that money from other people voluntarily the day, they are buying the shoes voluntarily every merchant can decide whether to take that or not just like they can take visa or not take visa <laughs> so no either has. either people will starve or the system won't work why anyway, let's um anyway, let's we'll talk we'll really, really to go. let's all pick right. it up next time we'll all right walter shub always a pleasure thank you all right